Hello, everyone. Welcome to our time of prayer and Bible reading and reflection for Sunday, August 2nd, 2020, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. And today we will use elements of the, the New Zealand uh, prayer book. Um, you'll recognize some of the elements of it as similar to what you would use in your church on a regular basis. And there are some, some uh, newer elements as well. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might be our God forever and ever. Amen. Great and wonderful are your deeds. O Lord God, the Almighty, just and true are your ways. O Sovereign of the nations. You shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealing have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne, to the Lamb and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. As the scriptures are read, we can allow God's word to speak to us and ponder its meaning for our lives. In our prayers, we give thanks for God's goodness to pray for others as well for ourselves. And we offer our lives anew in Christ's service. All this we do because we believe in the presence among us of our Savior, Jesus Christ and in the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Hear the words of Scripture. As God you called, who called you in holy, is, as God who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Spirit of God, Search our hearts. Let us kneel and in silence remember our need for God's forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved others as our Savior Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall do, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us rejoice in the rock of our salvation. We sing to you, O God, and bless your name, and tell of your salvation from day to day. We proclaim your glory to the nations. Praise to the ends of the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from, from the book of Genesis, 
chapter 32, beginning at verse 22. And here Jacob wrestles at Peniel. That same night, he got up and took his two wives and his two maids and his eleven children and crossed the ford at Jabuk. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise, everything that he had had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him in the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with, with humans and have prevailed. And Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. And the sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. A collect for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living grace, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of of Psalm number one number seventeen verses one to seven. It's a prayer for Deliverance from persecution. The psalm or prayer of David. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give, my, give ear to my prayer from, from lips free of deceit. From you, let my vindication come. Let your eyes see the light, see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. As for what others do, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the vile. My steps have held fast to your path. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, now and forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading today is from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. And it is God's election of Israel as his people. St. Paul writes, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conceit confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and, 
and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that myself, that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the laws, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God's flesh forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Here's the story of the feeding of the five thousand. Now, when Jesus heard this, he drew, he withdrew from there in a boat to a, a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the, from the town. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sickness. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place. The hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left of broken pieces, twelve basketfuls. Those who ate were about five thousand men, besides the women and children. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee. And so today, I propose to do something a little bit. I have a reading in front of me from uh, a gentleman by, by the name of F.B. Meyer. And F.B. Meyer was a, a writer and theologian in England in the, 18, in, in the late 1800s. And he wrote a... Uh, a book called Christ in Isaiah. And the reading assigned for today, August 2nd, from his particular book, Christ in Isaiah, published in 1895, uh, I propose to read to you today. August 2nd, 1895. Passage from Isaiah goes this way. I will turn all my mountains into rain. Isaiah 49, verse 11. God will make our obstacles serve his purpose. He will have mountains in our lives, and often they are people and things that threaten to block the progress of our salvation, of our spiritual life. The obstacles may be untruths about us, a difficult occupation, a thorn in the flesh. As uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 would say. Or our daily cross to bear. And often we pray for their removal. But we tend to think that if only these were removed, we would live a more tender, pure, and holy life. 
how foolish you are and how slow of heart, says Luke chapter 24, verse 25. These are the very conditions we need for achievement, and they have been put in our lives as the means of producing the gifts and qualities for which we have been praying for for so long. We pray for patience for we pray for patience for many years. And when something begins to test us beyond our endurance, we run from it. We try to avoid it. We see it as some unsurmountable obstacle to our desired goal. And we believe that if if it were removed, we would experience immediate deliverance and victory. This is not true. We would simply see the temptations to be impatient, impatient in. This would not be patience. The only way genuine patience can be acquired is by enduring the very trial that seems so unbearable today. Turn from our running and submit. Claim our faith to be part to be a partaker in the patience of God and face our trials in Him. There is nothing in your life that distresses or concerns you that cannot become submissive to the highest purpose. Remember, they are God's methods. He puts them there for a reason, and we know He will never fail to keep. God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. So when we come to the foot of the mountain, we will find our way. F.B. Meyer, Christ in Isaiah. The purpose of our trials is not only to test our worthiness, but also to increase it. Just as the mighty oak is tested by the storm, as well as strengthened by it. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we all praise, honor, dominion and glory on this day and forever. Amen. And now to him, God is my salvation. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my son, and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day all of you will say, Give thanks and call upon the name of the Lord. Make known among the nations what the Lord has done. Proclaim that the name of the Lord is exalted. Sing praises for the Lord has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, you people of God. For great in your midst is the Holy One. Isaiah 12, verses 2 to 6. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So, we've heard the scriptures open to us. We've heard our, uh, our beloved F.B. Meyer and his, uh, his uh, message to us from, uh, from 18... Uh, 95, 
to stand fast and to uh, and to be strong in the Lord. Now let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Dear Heavenly Father, make your ways known upon the earth. Our saving power among all people. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy, O God, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace, and let your glory be over all the earth. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created. And by your love, we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live each day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as we Again, another week as we look to, uh, to God for strength and guidance over the over the coming seven days. Let us remember to go out from our homes and from wherever we are with joy. Let us remember to thank God through faith. But the miracles of the living God, the miracles of the five, of the feeding of the five thousand plus women and children, may be made known not just to us, but to all those we encounter. Let us be called to demonstrate in and through our own life how full of miracles this life can be, even in times of trouble and grief. So friends, my prayer today and every day is that each and every one of us will exercise our faith such that we see the awesome miracles of God around us and in us. That we live our lives with compassion so that others may experience God's unimagined miracles in their lives. Finally, that each of us will understand that we too can be facilitators and proxies of God's miracles in our world and the world to come. Amen.
God, our United Lord. So this we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful God bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.